Wow. <laughs> are you surprised to see me? Well, if you are, I'm just as surprised as you are to be doing this. I'm doing it on a whim. I'm doing it on a whim. This is the House of Stitches blog, not blog, blog, podcast, House of Stitches podcast. See, I don't even know what to call it. But I am exploring my knitting and crochet journey and maybe a little bit of spinning um, through this medium. Trying to connect with other knitters, crocheters, spinners who are out there. And I think if you are a returning viewer, you know that I've had about four or five other podcasts and I think the last one I did was in December and that was so off. I was so off in that one, but I, I made it through. But uh, if you're new, that's this is what I do. I just kind of talk about what I'm doing and what I've done and just chatting and about my knitted and crochet and other yarny goodness um, items. So, why don't we just, why don't I just start? Why don't we just see how this goes and hopefully I'll upload it. It's kind of late in the evening. My house doesn't get a lot of natural light, but I'm working with the natural light that's coming through right now. So, we'll see how it goes, okay? What have I been doing? Well, I do a lot of knitting. I've been really working on the knitting, but then I do a lot of frogging. Knit, frog, knit, frog. And if you are not... Um, familiar with the term frogging. If you're not a knitter, you know that, well, frogging is when you undo everything. You just take it out and roll it back into a big ball of string, okay? But there are some things I have finished, and one of them is a virus shawl. Now, if you're a knitter, you don't know what a virus shawl is, but crochet seems like doing a virus Shaw is some kind of rites of passage. And I did one. And this is it. And I like it. It was a very interesting and kind of uh, very interesting uh, pattern. Uh, kept my attention through the whole thing, easy to memorize, um, kind of addicting. Um, this yarn is Katia, K-A-T-I-A. It's a wool and acrylic blend, I believe. I don't have the ball band anymore, but I love it. All these changes, color changes, were the ball of yarn. And I really like it. It's a nice, uh, nice yarn. It's, it's a nice yarn. But I did this, and it, I needed, um, at the time when I was doing this, I kind of needed to settle, have something that I settled into, and this fit the bill. This fit the bill. And that seems to be pretty, the color seems to be pretty true. But I love it. I think it's going to be a gift knit or going in my gift pile. I'm not sure for who, but we shall see. I guess in time, it will reveal itself to me. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to make another one. I'm going to stop this. And go get the other yarn for the second one that I'm getting ready to start. Okay, this is the... Oh, okay. I hope that you're not... Are you reading that backwards? Okay. Isn't that something? This is appearing upside down in my, on my screen. But it's not upside down. I'm reading it, you know, 
from left to right. But anyway, if I do this, can you see it? Well, it looks right to left. No, it's, yeah, left to right. Anyway, it is a premier yarn, DK Colors. And these are, it's an acrylic yarn, but it's very soft, very nice. And the person that I make, I know who I'm making this for. She likes cool colors. So I have two cakes of this that I'm going to do a virus shawl. And this is, I think it's like maybe four rows. Yeah, I think it's four rows that you just repeat. I think that's the way it goes, if I remember correctly. And I did, it's free. Um, I did it using YouTube videos. There's a, lots of them. If you do virus shawl, it'll come up. But uh, the person that I'm making the second one for, like I said, she likes cool colors. And it's you can make a virus shawl as large as you so desire. And on this one, I just kept going until I had, until I ran out of yarn. So that's what I plan to do with these two balls. It should be a little bit larger. I want to say this cake was... I want to say it was 600 yards of yarn, I do believe. And I think now on this one I have about maybe seven, 700, 800, so it should be just a little bit bigger. But that's what that's what's coming up. And what else have I finished? My other finished object is a getting warmer shawl. And this was knitted. And this pattern is by Espastrico. Espastrico. Am I saying that correctly? And uh, again, this was, I liked this knit. Again, it was one that I could relax into. I seem to have needed that. And I'm going to tell you why I needed these patterns. It's because of my sock knitting, but I'm going to wait and tell you about that. It's, it's just not been good. But anyway, I will get, I'll, I will talk about it. But anyway, I needed this very nice pattern. The only thing that bothered me, this was a yarn that a friend of mine was destashing lots of her yarn. And I was the recipient of it. This is an acrylic yarn, but it's a mystery yarn. <laughs> yeah, she didn't have the ball, the, um, it didn't have the uh, ball bands on it. So, it is kind of had its tonal, you can kind of see some striping in it. It handles itself very well. Uh, and I have tons of it. I have three balls, they were like 200 grams each so um, yeah it's a lot and but I love it it's garter stitch it's a free pattern uh, called getting warmer cow on Ravelry and it you know it has the uh, two by two ribbing and then you go into this garter stitch in the round the only thing I did not like, as you can see my end's not woven in, right here. You kind of see that little line. I don't know what to do about that. Um, but that's where, you know, the beginning and ending of each round. And I didn't like that, but I guess I could live with it. The other thing, which I may correct, I may not, is I did just a tr regular bind off. I should have did a stretchy bind off. And this doesn't have enough give in it for me. I mean, I can get it on. I'll show you. But it's, 
a little tight for my head. And I feel like when I put this on, I increase the ramp, the number, because I was looking at the uh, project pages of other people who had made it, and some, or so who are a little bit more endowed, they increase the uh, cast-on stitches. And... Uh, I kind of was thinking it would come down like a little jacket, but all the pictures that I kind of saw of people wearing them it was kind of up like this, and uh, I guess that's okay, but I kind of wanted it to come over the shoulders. I liked knitting it. It gave me a sense of Yes, Karen, you can knit. Yes, you can. <laughs> so, but I may, may or may not, I might live with it. I, um, my tension is not too good on, on it. Uh, I think it's a good beginner knitting pattern that if you want to work on your tension, it's a good one to do. I haven't blocked this. I was going to steam block it to see if some of those places where I may have made a mistake would uh, kind of ease out. But um, I'm making another one. Since I had so much of this yarn, I have a relative that likes cows and she likes dark colors. So I decided to make another one. Yes, I did, and here it is. You can kind of see the striping a little bit. It's happening, it's very tonal. It's a cool brown, not a warm brown. Mm -hmm. uh, very earthy looking. And my tension is so much better. And so much better. Yeah, it is improved. Yeah. So, I'm uh, going to do a few more rows of the ribbing, and then I'll start on the garter stitch. And this time, I tell you what I'm doing, which is really good. I cast on 168 stitches, and this is for a very tiny, tiny person, so she should be able to pull it down. But uh, I put in every 20 stitches and I've done this since I've cast on, I put in markers. And that way, it helps me, like if I drop a stitch, which I haven't done, <laughs> uh, but if I drop a stitch, I don't have to go back the whole thing to try to find it. I know how, what should happen within every set of 20 stitches. Yep, yeah, see, this, that's 20 stitches, that's 20 stitches, and then of course I got uh, right at, this is the beginning, I put one of these markers on to mark the beginning, and uh, so um, the last, at some point, oh, right here, I, there's only like 8 stitches, because I cast on 168. But I know what's supposed to happen. Uh, you know, I should end on, begin with the knits and end in the pearls. Um, if for some reason I don't, can't, you know, my two by two gets off, then I know it's happened in a certain section. 
So as opposed to waiting until I get to the end of the row and something's off. And then I have to find out where I messed up. So I like that and I'm going to try to do that uh, with all my patterns. Especially knitting. Yeah, knitting. So I don't have to do it with crochet, but I do have to do it with knitting. But uh, I'm sorry if I'm just like in your face. I'm right here on it. How about that? I guess next time I'll use some light. Yep. Oh, look at this. Look at my hair. But anyway. So anyway. Um, so that's it. That's a work in progress that I'm working on. I'm also. I, I do have the Hotel of Bees shawl. Which... I'm in, I was enjoying it because there's so many different stitches and it was changing and the yarns were changing and that's kind of exciting. And I don't know where it's at. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I got it. This is it. Now see, I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, Karen, go ahead and finish it. But I was getting ready to frog it. But it, the I love the changing in the stitches. Love it. And this is like an eco-friendly cotton blend yarn. Uh, it's supposed to be a summer shawl. But I'm... I don't know. I don't know if I'll finish it. I was thinking that this... As I was looking at the yarn, I said it would make more of a really nice summer top. I think this is, okay, This that's the bottom right here. So I'm working up this way. Uh, so I chose the colors. I, w I can't remember the what brand yarn it is, but I do know it's a cotton linen blend, but it's echo friendly, which I think is like, when I think of echo yarns, I think of yarns that are sort of like a mix of all the other yarns, sort of like they scrape up all the stuff off the floor of the yarn factory and put it into, <laughs> into uh, the echo yarns. But, I don't know. I think there's a third color that hasn't been introduced yet. But I don't know. You think I should finish it or frog it? Don't you think this would make like a nice summer top? You know, kind of. Well, maybe not with those holes being so big. But, I don't know. I just see more of a summer top. Like a tee or something. Or a shell, you know. But I don't know. Have you made a hotel of bees, Shaw? I don't know. As you can see, I've been working on this for months. I started it, frogged one. I said, okay, Karen, okay, just do it, just do it. Started it again. And this is the again here. And I just kind of thought, I'm not going to wear this. I'm just not. I don't know. I don't know about the colors. I really, I don't know. I just, I don't know if this is my summer vibe. But not that I have a vibe per se, but I don't know that this is it. So, tell, you know, leave a comment if you've made one or tell me what you think. If you've made a getting warmer shawl, let me know. Uh, Cal, let me know if you've done that. And uh, So that's, those are kind of my works in progress and the little things I've made that have survived. I tell you, at one time I had about, I don't know, seven or eight projects in works in progress. And 
had one of my moments and I frogged everything. Just, yes, just pretty much everything. And I thought, let me get centered. Not let, I don't want to make the things for the sake of making the things. But I want to make things that reflect me. And so, uh, if I'm going to make them for myself, which I had, those projects were for myself that I um, frogged. And uh, I just didn't know about them. But I can tell the light is changing. I'm getting, it's getting dark in here. So I'm going to go on and tell you about my socks. You know, last year was supposed to be my year at the sock. I made a sample sock, which I think I showed in one of my previous older podcasts. And then there's this. This sock, this yarn, actually is a tough. I can't tell you how many times I have frogged and restarted this sock. When I got these DPNs, they are Knit Pro's Zings. I thought, oh, this is the answer. I love working with them. And I do. I do. But the problem was, I am still learning how to repair my dropped stitches. And also, when I get out of pattern, I do that sometimes. I just... I don't know what my brain just makes up a different pattern and that really annoys me I don't know how to very well I don't know how to unknit very well which ends up in more twisted stitches usually and even though I've made this in another yarn, a sample sock, the same pattern, which is Stepping Stones by Clara Parks. Uh, it's in the Book of Socks, but I think it's a free pattern also on Ravelry. Um, I've kind of, I don't know what's going on like right here. There's a ridge on the inside of the sock on both sides. This is my picked up stitches. So I don't know if I didn't pick them up in the right place or what. But this caused me to stop because it's bothering me. I don't know how to really fix it and I don't know really what I did wrong. And so I just kind of stopped right here. And then of course I did mess up in the pattern. I thought, okay, I can live with that. But sometimes when I make too many mistakes in my socks, I just say, well, I say, you know, to heck with it, uh, putting it mildly, <laughs> um, to heck with it, and I just undo it. I undo it. I can live with a couple of mistakes, but when I've made a lot, that really, really, mm, mm, you know, it just really bothers me, okay? So, <laughs> uh, but I'm determined. I don't think I'm going to be a sock knitter. Disappointing, but I don't think I'm going to be a sock knitter. But I do want to know how to make a sock. And I do want to make them. I'm just not going to be one of those people who has a sock going all the time. Well, I just have to accept it. That's just the way it is. Oh, but that's a cute little stitch marker from Kim the Crafty Nomad. <laughs> I don't have too many stitch markers, but uh, I enjoy using them. I do. I keep saying I'm going to order more, but, you know, it's one of those things. That just never get around to it, as they say. But I am going to finish this. This yarn is um, Socks That Rock Heavyweight. So it's almost not quite a, um, a worsted weight. 
it's a heavy fingering. I can't think of the color. I know, I think it's, I don't know, it's one that they, they continued. I think it's been discontinued, but yeah, this blue. But this yarn was really important to me. And uh, I'm getting ready to do uh, some live talk right now, so that's not your vibe, you know. I hope you come back, because I don't do much live talk, so. But do come back for, you know, my other knitting and crochet stuff. But this blue, I need to kind of comment on this. And uh, I'm getting ready to get my testimony in, as they say. But... Um, I think I did mention in my last vlog, I tried to do it in my last vlog, I didn't do it very well, but last year I had problems with my eyesight and I was on the verge of losing my eyesight due to fluid building up in my optic nerve. So I had to end up having surgeries on both eyes and after the surgery, my color cones were not healed. And I saw everything looked like a 1960s black and white sitcom. You know, that those tones of gray, gray. And that's the way I saw the world. And I was very upset about it and very upset with my surgeon. And Well, I was just going through stuff, as you can imagine. And so, after my third visit, my checkup visit with my doctor, I told him, I said, look, you know, I've got to be able to see. I've got to be able to see enough to at least read a magazine article, to knit, okay? Uh, those two things right now are important to me, to sew. I said, I've got to be able to at least do that. And, of course, he said I'm impatient and I'm still in the healing process, blah de blah de blah And he was right. Uh, my eyes are actually still healing. Uh, and I know that because I can now see more colors. But the first color that I could see was this color blue. And everywhere I go, I just go, oh, look at that blue. Look at that blue. If I saw somebody wearing it or uh, on the TV. Um, but yes, it was this blue. And that's the it was the first color and the only color I could see that would that was standing out to me. So I was like, I have to order some blue yarn. I have to order some blue yarn. So I did. I found this blue, um, and I thought, now after I did my sample sock, I said, yeah, I can do this. My sample sock was perfect. I loved wearing just the one sock around the house. I mean, it was just it's comfortable. Uh, and I may, um, at one point, knit its mate. But I thought, yeah, I'm ready. So I jumped in. This was uh, a little bit expensive yarn. It was for me. And I thought, I want these socks to be perfect. And so that was my frustration. Instead of just finishing it, I know it had to be perfect. So when I made mistakes, it just... You know, I just had to come apart about it. You know, I thought, no, 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 it's, I, it can't, it just can't go that way. So I would frog it and I would frog it because I wanted this blue to be the perfect sock. Well, as my eyes begin to heal and I begin to see more colors, thank God, yellow and green uh, are still colors that I can't see, but I can now look out my window here and see the, uh, leaves on the tree uh, that are green and uh, I give praise, I give praise, every, I mean the slightest little thing, the slightest little thing. So um, yeah, so that kind of bummed me out and really messed up with my that whole vision thing and the healing process. I kept trying to be positive and go on with life. Um, but it was hard. It was hard. <laughs> but I can't see, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And uh, the other thing that I had to deal with last year, and I didn't want to hear it, was um, 
uh, and this was overlapping with the eye thing, that I, had, I have kidney disease. And I thought, no, you've made that up. Uh, uh, you need to recheck my chart because you got me mixed up with somebody else. Anyway, after I accepted that, I was like, look, I'm dealing with too much. This kidney stuff is just, it's going to have to wait. And anyway, after I got through it, um, a little bit over a year, I started dialysis from the time that I was told. So uh, I've been doing dialysis for the last two months. Uh, and so that's what I'm going through. And I'm looking at having a transplant. Um, so uh, that's, what I, that's what has kind of kept me from podcasting. You know, I'm a very transparent person, and, uh, you know, I am. And I'm not really good with, uh, if something is deeply, deeply troubling me, it comes out. And I'm not good at wearing the mask, as Paul Dunbar would say. Um, I'm just not good at it. So, uh... I mean, I don't talk much about, you know, my health stuff or personal stuff or even my family. Oh, by the way, we're no longer multi-generational, you know. We were three generations under one one roof. And my grandkids, my daughter and grandkids have moved out. And I do miss them. I miss them. And uh, they're getting so big. They're still here in the city, so I'm thankful. Uh, for that and I had to get back to podcasting a few months ago my granddaughter asked me she's Nana when are you going to make another uh, YouTube video <laughs> so when your granddaughter asks you your eight year old granddaughter asks you about your YouTube activity you know you do have to get back in the groove so um, I'm going to upload this uh, edit it upload it and see what happens. So, um, if you're hung around to the end, I thank you. Um, if you're new, I hope you come back. Hit the subscribe button. I'm just kind of a person that talks, just just talks. I just chat. So, uh, yeah, do that. I'm uh, my. Oh, by the way, my name is Karen. But I go by Corota um, on the on on the webs, <laughs> uh, Studio Corota actually uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Those are my social media. Um, so if you want to check me out, you know, just do that. Studio Corota, uh, K A R O D A, Studio Corota. So it was nice uh, reconnecting, and I hope some of my old subscribers say hello. Please do say hello down, down there in the comment section. Uh, peace to you. Peace and love. Bye-bye.